news from an eventful week in Russian football I raised with the man in charge of producing the 2018 World Cup as Russia prepares to host the first such showpiece in Eastern Europe and one the organisers hope will leave a lasting legacy. 2018 FIFA World Cup, ladies and gentlemen, will be organised in <laughs> Russia. December the 2nd, 2010, football history was made. For the first time in 88 years, FIFA will hold the world's biggest tournament in the world's biggest country, as football's governing bodies aim to make the world's game a global festival. It can offer a new territory, it can offer a totally new world and a totally new market. Chief Executive Alexei Sorokin is tasked with delivering Eastern Europe's first World Cup. Poland and Ukraine were similar pioneers as hosts of Euro 2012, while Brazil is now braced for FIFA's top show for the first time since 1950, and Russia will use the experiences of each to ensure the success of 2018. Euro was valuable for us because it's a, it's a country, or actually there are two countries that are nearby that are the one country we share the mentality with another to a certain extent also. So some, some issues that were there uh, we think are pertinent here as well. But uh, the, very, the very essence of the World Cup of course will be picked up in Brazil. Russia's proximity to Central Europe, cheap flights and visa-free travel are hoped to fill a third of the stadiums in the 11 host cities with foreign fans. While the country is also keen to show the recent furore over anti-gay propaganda laws and reports of alleged racism have been misrepresented. We think part of the problem is that we are not um, open enough. We do not explain enough what is going on here particularly with the, with the law that you referred to, uh, there is a lack of, uh, of general knowledge of what the law is about. And it's basically about uh, people not willing to allow certain materials to be uh, propagated among youngsters. That's what it's about. It's not about fighting gay movement. Uh, it's pretty far from that, actually. In terms of racism, it's a, it's a difficult issue because uh, it's a universal thing. It exists to a certain extent everywhere. And so we, we together with the Russian Football Union, are doing the best we can to, to offstand and to, uh, to mitigate this. But we cannot eradicate it overnight. And it's not just about changing attitudes. $20 billion are being invested into overhauling World Cup-related infrastructure, while seven of the 12 mainly brand-new arenas will become home to local teams to boost flagging league crowds and commercialism in Russian football. So, though economists claim host countries don't profit directly from big tournaments, Sorokin believes the indirect bonuses will benefit Russia during 2018 and beyond. It's material legacy and it's uh, so-called intangible legacy. Uh, material legacy is clear, it's the infrastructure, it's the new venues. Uh, without venues, it's, it's impossible to further develop. But, uh, but intangible is no less important. Is people, first of all, fired up with the idea of not only football, but sports in general. Uh, and it's clear that there are more people going in for sports after they after competitions like the World Cup in any country. While Brazil has been dogged by protests and delays, Russia remains on schedule with four stadia due to be finished by the end of this year. And as the official logo Riley reminds us, the country is all set and waiting for you to join the party. Kate Partridge, RT, Moscow.